I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. You are about to hear a strange story. Names, dates, and places are, for obvious reasons, fictional. But many of these incidents are based on the actual experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Comrade, it's a word that should stand for something good. But I learned to hate it as the symbol of the most vicious hypocrisy in the world. One thing I knew for sure, being a comrade was one of the most dangerous occupations in the world for a man who believed in freedom. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Canadian Backbone. time is it? A little after midnight. Get dressed. You have to deliver this package to a comrade in Calgary. Calgary? In Canada? Mm-hmm. Your train leaves in 20 minutes. That package must be pretty important. It is. If you fail, if anything happens to the package, <laughs> well, it's nothing to what will happen to you. With that thought to comfort me, I was escorted by Comrade Drake to the station. In a few hours, I was crossing Victoria Jubilee Bridge into Montreal. And by morning, I was having breakfast aboard the Canadian Pacific Streamliner heading west. Oh, excuse me, monsieur, but may I join you? She was young, square-jawed, wearing glasses and a smile like a garfish. For no apparent reason, the chill of fear iced my spine as she sat down at my table. <coughs> monsieur, I... Ask for the menu. Hmm? Oh, of course. Here. Mm, thank you. I can recommend the sausage. It's deliciousness. Uh, Suzanne Poitier. To you, I would be just Suzanne. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, Matt Savetic. Matt. Suzanne and Matt. Oh, yes, I like that. We would make good neighbors, you and I. Neighbors? I have the compartment next to yours. We are neighbors all the way to Calgary. Oh, what makes you think I'm going to Calgary? Huh? Well, I, I must have heard you tell the porter. I, <laughs> yes, of course, that was it. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Oh, but, Matt, you have not finished. Mysteries ruin my appetite. Mysteries? Yeah. You see, Suzanne, I didn't tell the porter my destination. I didn't tell anyone. Matt, don't you recognize the man of nine angels? Mr. Ferguson, Secret Service. Hi. Nice to see you again, lad. Well, same here. You better let me see that package. <laughs> ah, you know everything, don't you? It's my business. Well, it's tough business this time. It's a strong box. Aye. Steel. 
And I don't have the key. I suspected as much. That's why I brought these tools of mine. Pick locks. Well, you did come prepared. Mm. It's going to someone in Calgary. Who? I don't know yet. He'll identify himself to me. Ah. Money. Hey, look at the size of those bills. What a sight for an honest Scot to see. Must be nearly half a million dollars. Mr. Ferguson, what's this all about? Hey, trouble. Lots and lots of trouble. In Calgary? That's the center of it. There's been too many breakdowns and troubles of all kinds recently on the railroads and airlines there. Too many to be accidents. Tommy sabotage? Aye, that's my thinking. And if I'm right, this money is intended to help the Reds enlarge their operations. Yeah, well, stopping this money will... I'm not stopping it. Huh? Yeah, they'd only get more money. The Reds have other sources. You know that. Sure, but if you I stop... I want the whole commie ring, Matt, particularly the leader. I need names and proof. <laughs> That's a big order. The communist in charge will have to keep records to account for so much money. All you'll have to do is to locate those books. Me? You can do it, Matt. If I was working with them, yes, but I'm not part of the Calgary cell. I'm only a courier. When I hand over the money, they'll expect me to go home. Then I guess you should go home. Try and understand, Mr. Ferguson. If I hang around asking questions, they'll, they'll crucify me. All right, laddie. Why, if anything happened to you, it would be on my conscience forever. Huh. What conscience? Because if you insist upon risking your neck, I cannot stop you. Try. It would do no good. Hm. You're a stubborn fool, Matt Savetic. <laughs> Staying in Calgary was going to be about as healthy as skipping rope with the rattlesnake, unless I came up with a very good reason. But two days later, as the train sliced through the great wheat fields of Saskatchewan and the endless cattle ranches of Alberta, I still didn't have an answer. Then finally we pulled into Calgary, a sprawling, oversized cow town where the bow and elbow rivers shake hands. Journey's end for me and half a million communist dollars. Miss Flottier. Oh, please. It is Suzanne. Yes, of course. But if you'll excuse me, I was expecting someone to meet me. Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne, my petite. How is my little girl? A merveilleuse, papa. Bien, bien. Ah, and of course, this is Monsieur Sveti. Permit me, I am Jacques Poitier, Suzanne's papa. You're also psychic, it seems. Eh? Must be a Poitier family trait. First she knows my destination, and now you know my name. What kind of a crystal ball do you two use? Uh, I can explain that. Well, easy. forget it. I have to meet some. May we, oui, monsieur, may we. Oui. <laughs> oh. Welcome to Calgary, Cobran. I think he is surprised, Papa. He is indeed. Well, here's the package, Comrade Poitier. It must have great value for you to send your daughter to help me guard it. Oui, oui, but its value does not concern you. Uh-huh. I, I hope you found Suzanne an agreeable traveling companion. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. The loveliest bodyguard I ever had. <laughs> ah, she's a very efficient worker for the party, too. Yes, I'm sure she is. Well, I, I wish I could remain for a visit, Suzanne. Oh. Now that I know you're a comrade, I'm sure I'd enjoy a little And why time. not? Suzanne? Oh, yes, Papa. Uh, comrade Chivetti, can you delay your return? Well, uh, yes. Ah, then it is settled. You will stay at our house and be our honored guest. Thank you, comrade. That means a great deal to me. Yeah, perhaps to all of us. <laughs> you understand, Suzanne is without the husband yet. <laughs> Who knows, my son? You may be the lucky one. The Poitier house turned out to be a large brick affair near the Provincial Institute of Technology and Arts and came equipped with a strange albino butler that bowed low enough to break his back but whose pink eyes forgot to smile when I did. Oh, Thornton, please take Monsieur Svetik's luggage to the guest room. He is visiting us for a few days. Of course, Mr. Poitier. Shall I unpack your bags and hang things up for you, sir? Huh? Oh, no, I can do it. Oh, it's no trouble at all, sir. Uh, Mr. Poitier. Yes? Your associates are waiting for you and Miss Suzanne in the library. Oh, uh, uh, Monsieur Svetik, perhaps you'd better let Thornton show you to your room now? Oh, certainly. I'd like to freshen up a bit. This way, sir. It's 
Mr. Poitier's associates. Perhaps I know them. Do you know their names, Thornton? I doubt you know them, sir. Shall I run your bath first? So it's me. Uh, do you think anyone would mind if I ran down and borrowed a book from the library to read while I soak? I wouldn't do that, sir. No? No, sir. Mr. Poitier has a fearsome temper when anyone interrupts his conferences. Excuse me, I'll draw your bath, sir. Well, what a nice, friendly place. He gave you good advice, Matt. Oh, did he, Cameron? Why? What goes on downstairs that I can't... I'm sorry, but Papa and I, we have strict orders. Do not to even discuss the work we are doing. Orders? I thought your father was in charge. Oh, no. No, he is only the liaison man for our leader, but... Oh, I am saying too much, and you ask too many questions. I would not like having to report you as being uh, uh, overly curious about it. Mm-hmm. But if it became necessary... I would. Ah, keep that in mind. You'd do that. The result of any such report would bring down on you the most severe disciplinary action. You uh, understand what that means? Oh, yeah, I sure do. Good. Ah, then let's talk about things more pleasant, huh? What would you like for dinner? I, uh, <laughs> I am a very good cook. <laughs> That's about it, Mr. Ferguson. Not much to show for three days. But they're making a point out of not letting me see or hear a thing. Aye, they're cagey ones. No argument about that. Every time I step out of my room, I seem to have one of the Poitiers or that pink-eyed butler Thornton for company. Even getting away for an hour tonight was like breaking out of jail. Aye, and every day the sabotage grows worse. I yeah, know, I read the papers. It's causing a real bottleneck. Aye, we'll have to move in soon. Mm, you can't. Not until we know who the commie leader is and where he keeps his records. With no proof, arrests will be futile. Don't you think I know that? Yeah. Uh, Matt, do you have a chance? I'll make one, Mr. Ferguson, somehow. All right, lad. Be careful. I, I would not want anything to... That is, I... Sure, I know. Now, good night, Mr. Ferguson. There was no more time for caution. The next night, after pretending to go to sleep, I slipped down to listen at the library door during one of Comrade Poitier's mysterious conferences. It was a poor gamble, for all I heard was a mumble of voices. I was on the verge of trying to look through the keyhole when I saw Suzanne coming down the hall toward me. There was no way to avoid discovery. I was trapped. <laughs> Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sevedic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. I was trying to help Canadian counter-espionage break up a big commie sabotage ring operating out of Calgary. But as I eavesdrop on Comrade Poitier's secret meeting... I found myself caught by the approach of the not-so-lovely Suzanne. What else could I do? I knocked. Matt, what are you doing down there? Yes. Svetik. Hi. Suzanne? I do not know. I saw him just as he knocked. Mm. How can I see Comrade Poitier? You pay very little heed to warning. And for a butler, you don't pay much attention to a guest's request. I asked to see... Yes. But perhaps you'd better come in. Thanks. Oh, excuse me, Comrade Poitier. I didn't realize you were busy. The meeting is adjourned, comrades. Good night. Good night. Oh, look, you didn't have to break up the meeting. Oh, mix. Comrade Matt, why did you do this foolish thing? Huh? Well, I... I guess I, I thought it was time to talk to you alone about some things. Alone? Oh, 
Oh, oh, so that is it. Suzanne, you here? Yes, Papa. I heard too, Jacques, but I'm afraid I'll need some explanation. But it is obvious, Nespa. He came to speak to me about Suzanne. He came to spy, you mean? No, no, no. Oh, he knocked at the door. It is once that the act of a spy. Comrade Toton, if he was a spy, would he have been trusted to bring us the money to continue our work? Give him a chance. Oh, yes. Yes, we will vouch for him. All right, all right. But if he causes us any trouble, you'll both answer for it along with him. Oh, now, look. Stop doing me favors. I'm a party member, too. Remember? Yes, but you haven't been cleared for this kind of work, comrade. Cleared? Oh, that tags you as MVD. That's true. I'm an agent of the secret police. But I'm more than that. I'm in charge of this operation. slow through the park. Yes, sir. Well? Thornton, Poitiers Butler. The boss? Uh Uh-huh. But I haven't any ideas where he keeps his records yet. Matt, I think Thornton's books may be right in the Poitiers house. He'd have to have them close at hand. That figures. But you'll have to be sure. If you can win Thornton over, work with him, preparing for a big piece of sabotage... That's a dream. He won't let me even... Tell him you know of a secret shipment of copper. A big double train load coming through Calgary tomorrow. No dice. You'd have ways to check up. Let him. The train is coming. Oh. Well, it might work, but it's risky. If Thornton doesn't let me work on it, we won't be able to stop him from sabotaging trains. It's worth the risk. Okay. How do I get word to you? We'll have the house surrounded like a blanket. If you can get outside, we'll contact you. And if not? Then get a signal to us. We'll be ready to move in. And I'll be ready to move out. You better drop me now. I'll have to meet Suzanne. Where? Drugstore on Maple Street. I promise to treat. (laughs) Thank you, Comrade Matt. Yeah. Oh, I, I love our working together, don't you? You bet. We have so much in common, you and I. Um, you, um, you haven't spoken to my father yet. Hmm? Oh, well, that is, because of the way things worked out, I, I decided it would be best to prove myself first. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, I must, or Comrade Thornton will believe we are putting sentiment ahead of our work. Oh, but... Don't worry, Comrade Suzanne. I discovered something tonight that I think will do the trick. I'll show him I can be just as valuable to the party as anyone else. But of course you can. I'll do it tonight if he's still up. Oh, come right in. I hope your work went well this evening. Oh, fine, comrade. <laughs> oh, better than that. Hmm? Oh, tell him, comrade, Matt, tell him. For sure. I picked up some important information from the chief dispatcher's office, one of the clerks. What kind of information? A big trainload of copper. Secret shipment due to pass through here tomorrow. Oh. What kind of reaction is that? You're lying, Svetig. I have my own sources of information, and I checked them only this afternoon. But I... There is no copper train scheduled tomorrow. And I say there is. Check again. Oh, don't worry, I will. Or maybe you'd better worry. I took the commie chief's advice. I worried. If Ferguson had made a mistake about that copper shipment, I was due for a long rest from breathing. Thornton plainly suspected that I was a spy, and my story just a trick to get his group to betray itself. I had no illusions as to what would happen if he became sure of it. You're wanted downstairs. What happened? Did Thornton find... I don't know. Come on. Suzanne, you know I... Please. I want to believe you, but I have to be sure that you are not what Comrade Thornton suspects. 
Well, that won't take long. Down here. In the cellar? Now, wait. What's the idea? Why? Like a morgue. Coach. What's in this room? The bodies? Uh, good. Come in, comrade. Suzanne, you go back upstairs. Yeah, I will. Mm-hmm. Coming in. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is my private room where Jacques and I plan our work. We oui, our most important work. Oh, wait a minute. I get the idea. I've just been taken out of the doghouse. That's right. It seems I made a mistake about you, Comrade Stetting. Oh. Well, don't bother to apologize. I wasn't going to. I acted as I felt proper on the information I had. Only, as it turned out, my information was wrong. The train is coming through here tomorrow, then. Just as you said it would. You've proved yourself both alert and loyal to the party, comrade. We can use these things. Thanks. I've also got an idea how this job can be done more effectively. Hmm? Your work has always been in or close to the railroad yards. But where else? Where would you pick, comrade? Kicking Horse Pass, where the railroad enters the Rockies. It's 40 miles from here. Now, if we arranged a real accident to happen in that pass... Aha! Oui, it would be magnifique. You're right, Jacques. It would take weeks to retrieve that copper and repair the line. You don't have much time to set this up. And if you don't mind, I'd like to work with you on it. Well, why not? Jacques, get my records out of the safe. We'll see whom we have to do this job. I watched as Comrade Poitier opened a hidden floor safe and brought out a familiar strong box, along with the records. It was time to signal Ferguson now, but that didn't look so easy from a small cellar room with no windows. Then I noticed the pot-bellied stove. Pay attention, comrade. What? Oh, yeah, it's cold in Put here. Put some wood in the stove, then. Along with the wood, I added my handkerchief. And when the fire was smoking good, I reached for the damper up on the stovepipe. I opened it for three quick, short intervals, followed by a long one. Somewhere above the house, I knew the smoke was rising in puffs that spelled out the Morse code letter V. V for victory. I could only pray that Ferguson saw it and understood. Comrade Stettig, what are you doing? Oh, it's this damper. It seems to be stuck. You have it open now. Leave it that way. That should complete the plan. Jacques, you send Bishel and Lane to Kicking Horse Pass. Comrade Ned, this telegram just came for you from the United States. For me? Yes. Let's see it. Oh, no. What's the matter? Take a look. They want me back home immediately. Oh, Ned. They're upset with you, comrade, for staying so long. So what? I don't care. I can't leave now just when we've... Comrade... Huh? Since when do our personal desires come before obedience to the party? Well, they don't, but I can't leave if right... If you're needed in America, you must go at once. But no, not right now. Come on, Matt. Well, you must. What? Suzanne, so you... The party comes first. Our, our own feelings cannot interfere with, with our duty. Sure, but I can't see that I have to go the right... telegram says immediately. That means now. Mm. Well, I... I guess you're right. Well, I'll leave right away. The sooner, the better. Mm, yes, comrade. As you say, the sooner, the better. I set a world's record packing my bags and left after an awkward farewell and kiss from both the Poitiers, who wished me the commie version of Godspeed, which means just leave out the word God. Two blocks away, I found Ferguson waiting to signal the raid to begin. Spook signal. You must think you're an American Indian. Well, it did the trick. You'll find Thornton's records and the money in a floor safe in a room in the cellar. Good. Good work, Matt. We are ready to move in. Stubborn fool that you'll be. Sometimes it's a pleasure to have you around. Same to you, sir. And thanks for the telegram. Well, now, I couldn't take a chance on your being hurt or maybe killed in one of our own raids, could I? It would look terrible on my records. <laughs> yeah, but you saved me from a fate worse than that, Mr. Ferguson. Worse, lad? 
When you raid the house, take a good look at Suzanne Poitier. I think you'll see what I mean. Goodbye, sir. Once again, a job was finished, and yet the fight was never ended for the Fergusons and myself. In Canada, as in every country dedicated to the principles of freedom, men like us would always be joining hands in silent war against the forces of communism. But even as we fought together, I remained a man who must continue to walk alone. Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. All over the world, people like you and I and the folks next door are faced with the insidious threat of communism. We can meet that threat only by being alert, by never closing our eyes to the fact that it is a threat. Join us next week when we bring you another thrilling experience of Matt Savetic, won't you? Mm-hmm.